We are here to uh, share some thoughts on the discussion for Module 8 in the 201 class. And in this discussion, I put this you know, little anecdote or you know, element. The following statement was included in an email to me, and it said this, quote, We don't know who wrote some of the biblical books. If we can't be sure the Bible was written by a reliable author, how can we trust it? Unquote. And so I ask, what is or are the logical fallacy or fallacies in that statement? Well, at its heart, the question confuses authorship with reliability. And it's, it mixes those two things. Just because we don't know who wrote a document doesn't mean that the document is unreliable in the information that it gives. For instance, let's say you receive a letter from a lawyer. Again, you don't know who the lawyer is, just some law office. You receive a letter from a lawyer or a law office that's unnamed, you know, the, the actual person who wrote the letter, you don't know. But the letter tells you, and it cites plenty of U.S. legal code passages, that you cannot be sued for something that somebody wants to sue you for. So here's the question. Do you consider the letter unreliable because you don't know which person in the law firm wrote the letter? Really? You know, conversely, think of it this way. Here, think of the opposite. Having a record of who wrote something doesn't make it reliable. Is a claim made on Facebook or Twitter when you know who's behind the account just because you know who's behind the account, does that make the statement reliable? Obviously not. So we're confusing two different things, okay? We're confusing authorship with reliability. It doesn't matter who wrote a book of the Bible or some other document as far as its reliability when its content passes various reliability tests, it can be considered reliable. And there's two kinds of tests. Okay, if, if there are claims in the document that can be historically tested, okay, for coherence, all right, there, there, you know, there's a testable thing in there. Did XYZ happen on such and such date or, you know, something like that. So, there are things in documents that can be tested for their coherence and their reliability. And, you know, coherence and reliability might, might come down to a situation where you could see that, okay, the information in this document, I can't find complete 100% correlation for it, but I can find it for a number of the points. Or, you know, there, th this other document over here puts this in a slightly different way, but I can think of two or three ways that, that both documents might be reliable, that they can work together. I mean, there, in other words, there's nothing that, that says that, that the document you started with just can't be the case. You, you can think of solutions, even if you don't know which solution is correct. There are certain very possible solutions and resolutions that would make this document coherent and reliable and, and another piece of evidence that, that you might discover along the way. So those are the kinds of things you, you can be tested uh, you know, for reliability. There, then there's also just general logic. Uh, if, if the document makes a claim about something spiritual, well then you can't you know, put that under the microscope. The tools of science aren't, aren't really any good anymore. Then you have to use, use the tools of philosophical discussion and logical argumentation, logical coherence, you know, which, which ultimately goes all the way back to, is there a God or not? If there is, can, can this God do a certain number of things? You know, why or why not? I mean, explain why God can't do X, Y, or Z coherently. There's any number of ways that you can examine a piece of writing that you don't know who wrote it to see whether it is coherent i.e. reliable or not, whether it deserves to be trusted. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Does it deserve your trust? So none of that, none of those things depend on who wrote it. 
You don't have to have an identification. You know, and frankly, we, again, I, I gave you two real life illustrations about you get a, a letter from a, a law firm. You have no idea who wrote it. You assume it's somebody within the law firm, but you don't know who the author was. You're not going to just toss it in the trial. It's unreliable. They, I, don't, I don't know who the exact author is. It's, it's absurd. And then the reverse, just because I do know who the author is, oh, it's true now. No. So th there are any number of things in real life that, that we get in the mail, that we trust, a sign we see, you know, something on a menu, you know, warns you about nut allergies or something. I mean, there's any number of things throughout our day, any piece of writing that we see that we assign trust and validity to that we have no idea who wrote the thing. Zero. So the, the way I think we need to approach this out of the gate is to show that it is incoherent and illogical to conflate these two things. Reliability with known authorship. It is completely unnecessary. 